Welcome to the Empower Woman Show, where we strengthen women with the Word of God. My name is Amanda Bedra. I am your host. With me on the show today is Erika Idechofu. And we also have another guest with us on the show today. Reverend Victoria Lawrence. Thank you for having me. Welcome, ladies. So today we are continuing to talk about women in the Old Testament. And on today's episode, we're talking about some of my favorite women in the Bible. Um, we are talking about <laughs> yeah, <we know>. Leah, <laughs> Rachel, Tamar, and Dinah. Mm. Now, I'm hoping that it's not going to be a heated show because <laughs> there's already... <laughs> <laughs> There's already a contention between sisters, mm -hmm. and we are going to be talking about two sisters that were married to the same man. Now, Leah's story is one that is a story that I love so much. She's a woman who the Bible described as unloved. Um, I think she was very unnoticed and she was very unwanted. Let me do a quick synopsis about Leah. So, so Leah mm -hmm. is... Leah is the woman that was not wanted by Jacob, for lack of better words. Jacob was in love with Rachel. He runs away from his father's house because of um, a deception that has happened. And so he ends up in his uncle's house and he is met with the beautiful Rachel. The Bible describes Rachel as beautiful, right? So he's met with Rachel, he sees her first, but subsequently he starts to live in the house and Rachel has a sister, Leah, and when Jacob starts to, Jacob starts to work for his, uh, for his uncle and his uncle says, well, you can't work for me for anything, isn't it? So what do you want in return? And he asks for Rachel because maybe from the first moment he set his eyes on her, he was like, beautiful woman of my dreams. However, on the night of the wedding, there was a switch. And so the wrong sister is given to the right man. Leah is given to Jacob instead in the morning. One of the greatest deceptions in history is uncovered. The Bible says he, he, he looks at her and it's behold, <laughs> this is Leah. But there was almost an immediate rejection um, on Leah's part. And as we, as we can tell in the Bible, Jacob is he's absolutely furious about it. But seven days later, he's married to Rachel because that's the woman that he wants. And he chooses to work another 17 years. Um, seven years. Seven uh, sorry, seven another years. seven years for Rachel, which means that he's, he's served 14 years 14 for this years. beautiful woman. Now, that's a very short, short synopsis. But however, I have written a book titled Leah, Unnoticed, Unwanted, and unloved if you want to find out a bit more about these women in the Bible, but we're going to chat about them now. My, my sister is very <laughs> angry with me because she feels that there has been an injustice to Rachel. So I, for yeah. the first time, we get an opportunity to chat about it. And I'm happy that Reverend Victoria is here so, so that she can moderate. She can be a yeah, moderator. Referee. Yeah, no, but no I, have to, I have to say it, right? Even in the way you describe Leah's story, there's your unconscious bias coming out. Okay. She was rejected. She, but she what, was rejected. Excuse me. What did you ex Did he... It's not like they said, would you like Leah? And he said, no. Okay. He woke up and she mm. was there. Mm. He was not expecting her. It was not a conversation that was happened. She wasn't mm. offered. He wasn't given a choice. Mm -hmm. He responded, reacted in the moment, right? So yes, she was rejected, but it was not a rejection of thought. It was a rejection based on a reaction. Mm. This is not what I was expecting. Mm. So please don't set it up like everybody was against Leah, <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay, just, just, just putting it out there. All right. However, I think for me, when I, when, when I think about Leah and what makes, me, um, what makes me passionate towards her is the fact that she didn't have a choice in the matter either. I so it wasn't agree. like she yeah. was asked and she said, no, I don't want mm. to marry Jacob. Mm. She was a pawn in her father's deception. Mm. So it would have been painful, to, painful for her to be rejected by Jacob, but also to be rejected by her sister mm. for something that was not her fault. She didn't choose it. Okay. I am sympathetic to her, um, to her story because I know that it's also the story for many women who end up in 
unlovable marriages where they are rejected by the people that are supposed to love them, love them. the people that are supposed to accept them. And it's so painful that it's recorded in the Bible. The Bible says when, when um, God saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb. Mm -hmm. He gave her a consolation for something that was expected to have happened. The, the love affair between um, Jacob and Rachel is something that's unusual in the Bible. It's, it's not something that we see where the basis for marriage usually is love, that women are often just given to the men, and there is the expectation of the men to honor the women that they're, they're, they're given to. But this is different in that that expectation was not met by Jacob. Mm. Fine, there was a deception. Fine, he had the rights to reject her, but possibly not in the way that he did. Um, okay, so what did you expect him to do? Oh, wow, Leah! Welcome. Well, no, <laughs> come on. Okay, we're not talking about men. Let's let's focus on Leah. You're right. She was a pawn. She. It was an unfortunate situation. And bringing it to today's world, it's one. It's a story that a lot of women can relate to, mm. right? Where they find themselves in. We still have arranged mm. marriages, mm. Um, and all sorts That's of things where, where women um, are placed in those situations. I think I have to commend her for the. For all of it, I was going to say for the most part, but she carried herself with grace and dignity. It might have been a case of, um, you know, she knew that at this point all she had was God to get her through this difficult time, but mm. I'll give it to her. She, she, she carried herself well, and I thank God that we have a God who, again, who restores, who blesses mm. people, who's constantly looking to, to bring justice. We have, we have a God that, you know, mm. delivers justice, and he came through for for Leah. He came through for Leah. What would you say, Reverend Victoria? Let's talk a bit about Rachel, because again, without trying to be, bi without trying to be biased, what we see in the Bible is, although Rachel was Jacob's desire, it appears that Leah was God's design. Mm. So what <clears throat> would you say about these two women? I mean, sister, it was a difficult situation that they found themselves in, obviously. Yeah and uh, obviously trying to navigate that. Rachel would have resented her older sister for what happened, even though it wasn't her fault. But when you read the story, I don't see any sense of empathy from Leah. Do you understand? In the sense that if you know that, okay, this is my, this is my, my, this is my sister's, you know, husband to be. I mean, everybody knew Jacob wanted Rachel. Seven years. Everybody, had, knew. everybody Seven knew. years. And then, mm -hmm. and there are things she did that you think, ah, ah, come on, Egbo. You're not, you're not, making, you're, <laughs> you're not showing empathy here. Because when Rachel was behaving like a child, giving a servant, maid servant to Jacob that, you know, going to, to and then what did she do in return? She I did mean, the same thing. Sadly, and you're thinking, duh, you know, what was that all about? So, I think in, in that moment, you know, I lost a bit of compassion for her because at least give it to the, okay, your sister is angry, your sister is resentful, maybe she's behaving rightfully childishly, so. rightfully so, behaving childishly, okay, okay I'm going to give my, maybe this child will be, be mine, let you, because that, I, I mean, literally, that's what would have happened anyway. So the, these women were surrogating, the servant were surrogating for Rachel. You already have children, right? For the man, so why are you surrogated as well? Why are you he sending your male server? It's like competition yes. setting. You know, so you have, well, you, you might be the beautiful one, I may be the ugly one, but I'm the one we'll bearing the children. children. Exactly. <laughs> a bit and of Penina <laughs> moment. Yeah, a she bit was of really like Penina. Yeah. Penina. <laughs> and it is interesting to see that the way she named her children mm. until she was exactly got to Judah. Judah. Her desire was. For her desire was uh, Jacob. She wanted Jacob to love exactly. her. You know what? Okay, so is let's, that wrong? No, it's not wrong. So let, you're, thank you for what you said. <laughs> thank you. I think the, the three people in here suffered a great injustice. Yeah. Yes. Leah was a pawn. She found herself, like you said, in a marriage where there was an expectation that a woman is given to a man and the man mm. loves and cherishes her. That didn't happen mm. because of the unique circumstances in that Jacob had been Mm. His desire was somewhere else, and he yeah. had kept that desire for seven years mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. We know that, right? So there's that. There's Jacob, who's just caught between a rock and a hard place. And there's Rachel, who, mm. as well, had waited all of this time. Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway is the lack of empathy, empathy. each person had for the other. Yes. Yeah. Right? Because even Jacob himself somehow was not, didn't appear wise enough to navigate 
the yeah. relationship, the relationship, between, relationship between, yeah. you know, so yeah, empathy. Yeah. Because, empathy. Yeah. Even in your own suffering, even mm -hmm. when you're suffering, exactly. I think it's important that I understand that, okay, I might be in a situation where mm. it's not my own doing and God is coming through for me. Mm. But we've been called to love one another. Yeah. Right? Mm. If I'm putting you above myself, mm. I would be thinking about how you're That's feeling. Exactly. And trying to understand even why are you acting in this way. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I mean, some, it, the Bible doesn't say so, but some, some writings think that they were twins, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. This is your blood. Mm. Right, and then they start behaving like that. Where was the love? Mm. Where was the empathy? Mm. Let's not lose ourselves yeah. in the process of trying to to prove a point or, or to whatever. to win, win to about, vindicate yeah, ourselves. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I just wanted to add, you know, as I would to anybody out there who is a woman, maybe you're trusting God to have a child of your own and you've been waiting for a long time, especially as Christian women, because I know there's all these. Um, issues around you know waiting on god and i will not look at other option you know adoption is an option we see in that story was it was surrogacy exactly. is also an option um it's in the bible so if that's the option that god wants to use to bless you with a child please consider it yeah because rachel yeah. didn't wait to insist on yeah. having her own, her child. own child she was yeah. willing to you know, yeah. um, to, to surrogate so yeah. that she could still yeah. have a child that she could love and she could mm. raise. Of course, our motive... Her, her motive <laughs> may have been wrong. I'm <laughs> laughing about, you know, that her statement, give me children or I, I die. die. <laughs> you know? As though, and Jacob is like, am I the one? Am I, am I, I God? the one who wants to but, but I blame Leah because it's Leah that made her feel like that. Uh, why are you blaming Leah? Because what she said yeah. now, you know, she had done the surrogate yeah. and Leah was like, oh, so you yeah, are doing yeah. that to me too, I yeah. can do that. And Rachel just felt at that point she was losing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's interesting the way the Bible says when God saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, mm. which for me suggests that there's a possibility that she was barren. And if you look at the women in that lineage, from Sarah had an issue with barrenness and then Rebecca, who is... Um, their auntie had an issue with barrenness and then it comes down to mm. um, even Leah and Rachel. There might have been something in that um, family that there was an issue of barrenness. So if God is opening Leah's womb because she was unloved and choosing to leave Rachel barren, was there some kind of... Um, endorsement from God? Not necessarily an endorsement, but I, I wouldn't use the word... Well, we just know that yeah. she was barren for a, a mm. whole lot longer. Mm. There are also some similarities between Rachel and Rebecca, who's her aunt. Just, just so that people don't think that we're saying God was endorsing. No, 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 I'm not yeah. saying God I, was endorsing We don't that. know I'm why. I'm just saying that mm. Leah's think, children was a reward from God. Yes, and my reading of that is, the Bible says he will give us beauty for ashes. For your sorrow, he will give you joy. Mm. God always gives you something. Mm. He's a God of justice, of right? When there's an injustice done, yeah. he will make it right. Yeah. And it might be that the way he's made it right almost seems like, um, you know, he's giving you something that someone else has. Mm. They might not necessarily be related. Link, yeah. you know? and also, Let's look at it as this mm. is what Leah needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And God gave that yes, to her. Uh, yeah. Not necessarily what he yeah. 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 gave to he, Rachel. What, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah. also we have to remember, like you always want to bring the God moment into it. The 12 tribe of Israel needed to come out of... Well, that's Jacob. another point, right? He needed you know? to have 12 kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, uh, and that was what happened in yeah. that, even though it didn't make sense, we're thinking, but they needed to come from that's, the that's bosom of Jacob. That's amazing. I hadn't thought know? about that. And, there was, there was, was still happened. strategy and there was yeah. still order. Yeah. Yeah. Although there is still the one who is the mother who we know is the lion of the tribe of Judah, but I'm not mm -hmm. going to say anything mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. that. <laughs> um, but what, what, what I wanted to touch on was this, the similarities between Rachel and Jacob's yeah. mother. And I wonder whether when Jacob saw Rachel, she reminded him so much of his mother. She, you know, the Bible tells us Rebecca was beautiful. The mother was a schemer. Rachel was oh. beautiful. The mother was a schemer, <laughs> but Rachel was a schemer as well because she's the one who stole her father's household gods and Why then was her lied. Father worshiping a god other than our, the, god, the king of kings. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why must she do what her father was doing? She just doesn't like Rachel. That's I, it, isn't I, it? I, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I very biased, but you know, we forgive. She has many friends called Rachel, by the way. Oh, like, exactly. that, oh that's why. 
Oh, well, maybe, I'm maybe, sure they're watching maybe. me. <laughs> Rachel. Well, Rachel, please, I love you. I don't, I don't despise Rachel, but as, all, as with everything, I think that there's a lot that we can learn mm. from her. Mm. and from her story as well, as yeah. the things not to do. Mm -hmm. The Bible doesn't shy away from the good parts. The Bible mm. doesn't shy away from the bad parts. Yeah. So it tells us everything in, mm. you know, in between, as a complete yeah. picture. And I think that, you know, in reading Leah, don't discourage people from reading Leah. No, I think that I handled the book sensitively. Yeah. You did. Yeah, you did. You it did. was a story yeah, about yeah. Leah. So let's see how sensitively you handle the story, story of about Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> when, when it comes out. <laughs> Concept. You have to write about Rachel. I have to write about Rachel. Okay. Redeemer. All right. Um, re re redeeming, redeeming, <laughs> redeeming Rachel. Redeeming Rachel. Um, but the 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 animosity between these two sisters was so great that they had to make a law mm. to say a man can never marry two sisters and then you know moving forward none of the brides came mm. uncovered so mm. it's one of those reasons why mm. you know yes you wear the veil but mm. brides have to be unveiled mm. so that that kind of deception doesn't, um, happen, doesn't again. happen again mm. okay so mm. let's talk about Leah's daughter we know yeah. that Jacob had one daughter. So he had 12 sons. Yeah. He had one daughter that's recorded in the Bible. Mm. And this is a beautiful young girl mm. walking around, minding her own business. And mm. she becomes an object of lust mm. for um, a Hivite prince, Shechem, Shechem, who decides to rape her. And then after that, decides to marry her. Yeah. One shouldn't have come before the other, but, you know, never mind. So that's what he does. But he decides to marry her. He, he says he loves her. He wants to. Um, so, so he goes to Jacob with his father. Uh, where, where else did we see that happen in the Bible? Where else have we seen that happen <laughs> in the Bible? Well, the other time we saw it happen, it didn't end up. Oh, oh, no, yeah, I think she's just tweaked us. I just tweaked what you're trying to say. We'll get there. <laughs> but um, what I love about Dina's story, and I, I want both of you to touch on that as well, is so after she's raped, he wants to marry her. Her brothers are furious. They don't tell their father what they're going what to they're do. What they're going to do. Huh? But they trick yep. a whole town of yeah. men mm. Mm. to get circumcised. And in their point of weakness, they go they and they them. massacre all, of, all them. of them. At a time where women can be described as having no worth. We see mm. that with the daughters of Lot, how quickly mm. he wanted to throw out his virgin mm. yeah, daughters yeah, to, um, to men. Mm. To, to men. Mm. How much honor did these brothers have for their sister to do something like this? How does that make you feel um, as a woman? Do you want to t touch on that a bit? Um, I mean, as, it, it's justice, isn't it? But then we're not going to endorse you know, wickedness because what they did was wicked. Mm. Um, they, um, Bad things will always happen to us in life, and we must allow the law to take its course. Even if somebody rapes anyone, we have to involve the local, the you know, local police and all that, so they can do justice to that. So I think what they did was wrong, and and they didn't just kill the person who was involved; they killed the whole. It will, so that's not God's justice. Mm. You know, that is man taking the law into their hands, and that is wrong. Um, but God is also a God of justice. You know, he always avenge, you know, for us. But we, we need to learn to allow him to be the one that does I like that. that. I like that you said that because that's the God moment in this, that mm. we should allow God be God yeah. Yeah. and not um, step in yeah. and yeah. be that God of justice yeah. because that's what they did, which, they did, which yeah. was wrong. Yeah. And in doing yeah. that, you know, would there have even been a benefit mm. of allowing him to marry their sister? They, they would never find out. So mm. we, we yeah. would never find yeah. out. No, I, I mean, it makes me, well, not the fact that they went and they killed, but the fact that they cared about their sister so much, it is, is, is great to know. And mm. um, people who have brothers or don't have brothers, I'm hoping that women feel that they have men in their life that will are willing to fight for them. That will yeah. stand for them, yeah. that will protect them, that care about them enough yeah. Yeah. to fight for them, right? Everybody needs someone mm. in their corner. So it, that, that was just really nice to see yeah. that these brothers loved their sister so much mm. that they were willing to protect her. Yeah. They were willing to defy their father. Yeah. I mean, they, they went to, their heart was in the right place. They just yeah. went around the wrong way. 
Okay. And, and I think also for, for women, you, you find that when, when a woman or a girl comes out from a, a father that is loving and protective mm -hmm. and has a sense of security, they look out for that kind of a person in the man that they marry as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Security and protection becomes more important to them than anything else that the man could bring to the table. It's all about, you know, it's powerful, it's security and, and protection. So, yeah, I think most, most girls want to know that they have, you know, big brother. But we do, don't we? We have Jesus. He's our, our big, big brother. brother. The, biggest brother. Yeah. the biggest brother. <laughs> the biggest brother. Okay, so we've got about five minutes left, and we want to talk about Tamar. Tamar. Uh -huh. mm. um, this story, where do we even start from? I, I mean, Tamar is daughter-in-law to Judah. Mm. She was married to his first son um, that the Bible describes as a wicked man. Mm -hmm. And so God... Um, killed him. allowed him to, um, right. to, to, to be killed. And then the Levite law at the time says that if you're married to a man and he dies, brother. his brother is supposed to raise up an offspring mm. Yeah. Mm. For, um, mm. for the woman. So mm. then she's given to the brother. So now she's given to Onan. But Onan is also a wicked, wicked. boy mm. because he doesn't want to raise mm. up an offspring for his brother. So mm. he does the unspeakable. Mm of um, deliberately spilling his seed on the ground instead of allowing, um, mm. allowing Tamar to be impregnated. And mm. so again, he unfortunately dies. Mm. Now, father and mother, Judah and his wife, don't know the context around why their children are dying. Mm. Surely they should, they should know about their, their, their the son's behavior. Mm. And it's not necessarily that even Tamar knew why the boy, why her husbands were dying. It's not like she mm. could have gone and said to them, well, this is what he's doing and this is why God killed him. So mm. she didn't even know. But what they decided to do is they had a third son and they're like, well, we're not going to give you to our third son just in case, mm. you know, this yeah, is the, the one last, killing them. Just in case, yeah, this is the last one that we've got. <laughs> so and instead, he was younger anyway. And he was, was much so, younger. So, so like instead, that. Judah lies to her and tells her, go back home, mm. continue to be a widow in your father's house. Mm. And mm. when he's old, um, he's, old enough. He's, he's old enough, we will we'll call you yeah. for him to mm. do what he's supposed to do, um, to, to honor you in, in, in the Levite law. But then she hears that he's, he's all grown up and she still hasn't been called for. Yeah. And so she, she, at that time, she's not free to marry another she's one. She's not free to marry anybody mm. else. She's, mm. she's just waiting for this boy. And so she takes matters into her own hands. The Bible tells us that she dresses up as a prostitute. She waits on the roadside. And Judah, mm. we're not even going to go into why he decided <laughs> to get <laughs> a prostitute in the first place. <laughs> to be fair to him, his wife had died, so, you know. Um, and, and he was he, feeling on it. He, <laughs> I didn't want to sit down, TV, but um, you could have got another wife. Right? Exactly. You could have got another exactly. wife, but you know, he, he does what he does what he does and gets her pregnant and then has the audacity. Of course, he didn't know it was her, mm. but then he hears that she's he's pregnant and mm. she was going to be stoned. But because she had evidence, but mm -hmm. this time it's good evidence, good she evidence. had evidence and she is able to redeem herself in that way. He's reminded of his sin, he's rebuked by it. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so he apologizes, takes her in, and, you know, she has twins, one of which we know um, is in the genealogy of Jesus as well. What would you say about that story? It's such a difficult place for any woman to be. But mm. taking matters into our own hands like that, mm. was that necessary? Well, was she, that the right thing to do? If she, well, two different questions there, okay. right? Was it necessary? I think she felt that it was. I think she felt that she, she just had to do it because she, what were her choices? Remain um, an unmarried woman in your father's house for the rest of your life. And we know that it wasn't quite easy for them. Um, was it the right thing to do? I don't know. But we know that Judah didn't do the right thing as well. So it's, it's just one of those ones where sometimes we've seen throughout looking at women in the Bible that this women just gets a sense of, I think this is what this is the strategy I need mm. to employ at this time. I don't know. I honestly don't know, Reverend. Yeah, it, it just it just makes you to to wonder what goes on in the mind of a woman. Mm. Women are very powerful beings, and mm. you know, if a woman really wants something, and that's to every man that is watching, if a woman really <laughs> <Everywhere>. wants something, <laughs> she's gonna get it. So, um, and whether she gets it the right way or the wrong way, she was gonna get it. Um, and I think that obviously taking the law into our hands, uh, but 
I always look in that story and see how God, again, you see how God always redeem oh. the abandon, the label, the people that we've labeled as bad in the Bible, how God find a way of bringing something sweet yeah. out of it. You know, it's just, it, it goes to show that God is a redeemer, always redeeming everyone. Whatever mistake you've done, wherever you have been, whatever you have been called, God is still in the business of redeeming people. I love the way that, you know, you read the Bible, the Bible says he brings beauty out of ashes. Yeah. And we see examples in the Bible of All beauty out of ashes so that we know that the Bible is not just words that's written. We mm. see the evidence yeah. of what God can do. When I think about Tamar, I see courage. I see mm. bravery. Yeah. She put her life at risk. Yeah. yeah. You know, she stepped out in faith, for lack of better words, because what if Judah had walked past her? Mm. And what if he had even recognized her? Mm -hmm. That would have been instant death for her. Mm. But she knew, so it must have been a really good disguise. And, you know, perhaps mm. he hadn't seen her years. Mm. But she knew that she was willing to risk her life for the sake of the continuity the of, her of her family. So either she wanted to protect her husband's name, she was so passionate about that, that she felt like this is what I need to do. But there was also that stigma around widowhood um, in the mm. Bible. So she did what she needed to do. Mm. We have come to the end of another episode. I don't know how time goes <laughs> by so, so quickly. <laughs> so quickly. But we've, I've really enjoyed this episode, yeah. I, you know, I, I, as well as all well, the other episodes. Yeah. I enjoy yeah, exactly. talking about <laughs> women in the Bible. And I hope that you are encouraged by their stories. You are empowered by their stories. These are real women like ourselves that have experienced real issues and there is so much that we can learn from their mm. stories and apply in our lives today. For more um, information about other women in the Bible, I've got another book titled An Introduction to Women in the Bible. I talk about 111 different women, who they are, where, um, where they can be found in the Bible and what you can learn from them. It's a great Bible studies guide. I encourage you to use it. Until next time, it has been such a pleasure talking about women in the Bible with you. Especially Thank you. Leah. Thank you to my host, especially Leah. <laughs> Leah. Have, a, have a great time. <laughs> Thank you to Pastor Dorothy Ofosuwari and the women of a different spirit ministry at Freedom Center International Welling for sponsoring this season of the Empower a Woman show. 